Now, a number of European countries have agreed to a plan in Paris to resettle rescued migrants. Uh, but uh, there is some controversy over it. Italy and France have clashed once again. Rosie in the queue can tell us more. What should happen to migrants that are stranded in the Mediterranean? Well, that was the subject of a meeting held yesterday with the EU Commissioner for Migration to try and come up with a strategy. Now, in principle already, a new strategy has been proposed and according to Macron, 14 countries are on board. This was the aim, to come up with a strategy to deal with the challenges at all stages of the problem in the Mediterranean, particularly to assist migrants in Libya to make sure the right people get the right help. Well, after the meeting, Macron took to Twitter because this document, this Franco-German agreement, we haven't seen it yet. We're awaiting that documentation. In the meantime, Macron has tweeted and he said, basically, the people crossing the Mediterranean, they've got two choices. They either have bombing in Libya or sinking in the Mediterranean. He said, we cannot let this still take place. So what is the aim? Well, this is it. He said, we must allow women and men who are entitled to asylum to be looked after without having to take the risks of crossing the Mediterranean. And they say, France upholds that commitment. Then they, so, they, then they say they must accelerate and also amplify the return policy for those who aren't entitled to asylum. He does clarify that that needs to be a humane and effective practice. Uh, finally, he says here, we need to make sure that when actually those migrants land in Europe, they get to European soil, there needs to be a better strategy then. There needs to be a quick landing. Of course, we've seen before, for example, in the case of Sea Watch 3, sometimes boats with migrants on board, having to wait over two weeks before those boats can land somewhere. He says there needs to be a quick landing, but also there needs to be that make sure that landing countries must not take this effort alone. One of those countries, of course, is Italy. Matteo Salvini took to Twitter ahead of the meeting, already saying, actually, we, will, we can't have it that France and Germany decide all these migration policies, ignoring the demands of the most exposed countries, saying, of course, that would be Italy. After the meeting, he said it was a flop, taking to Twitter again. He said, I've reiterated, Italy should not continue to be the refugee camp of Europe. His analysis of this meeting and the proposed proposed policies put forward is that that would be the same, that Italy still then would be this refugee camp of Europe dealing uh, with the real crux of the migration problem. The reality is, though, migrants still continue to cross the Mediterranean. And we heard just on Sunday that another ship is going back out to sea to provide what they believe is life-saving support for those migrants who decide to make the journey. Rosie, thank you very much for that. Well, to discuss the details of this tentative migration agreement, we're joined now from Paris by Euronews correspondent Annelise Borges. Uh, hello to you there, Annelise. So this is a very tricky issue. Some people might be a little bit sceptical about this uh, new agreement. It's not the first time that the EU has struck a deal on migration. Do you think this new agreement could potentially be more effective than ones we've seen in the past? Well, that is the million-dollar question, isn't it, Janet? Yesterday at the Elysee Palace, Emmanuel Macron was his confident self when he spoke about this solidarity mechanism being the way forward, when he described Europe as being one step closer to finding a cohesive, a common solution to the pressing issue of the disembarkation of migrants and refugees rescued at sea. He spoke about those 14 countries. For now, we know of eight countries that have indeed enacted their participation. Those countries are Croatia, Finland, France, Germany, but also Ireland, Lithuania, Luxembourg and Portugal. These are the countries that are already officially on board. We have yet to receive a full list of countries as well as details of this deal. But of course, the question now is, can any deal work without the participation of countries like Italy and Malta? These are countries that would like to see a different kind of strategy, a, a, a separation and, and um, more details of in terms of what kind of equal distribution of arrivals across all EU ports could be established. That's what Italy and Malta would like to see. And for now, of course, Italy is absolutely not on board with this uh, plan put forward by Germany and uh, France. Italy would like to see a very different response. And as Salvini was saying on Twitter last night, he would like to see Macron come to Italy to discuss this disembarkation mechanism. Any kind of disembarkation mechanism, of course, would need 
wanted to have the participation of Italy, Italy being the closest port to one of the main destinations, uh, departure points for migrants, Libya. Indeed, Italy a big player in all, all this. And Annelise, you've seen for yourself the plight of refugees uh, coming to Europe, especially during your reporting on the Aquarius rescue ship. What do you think will be the reaction of uh, rescue organizations to this plan that's been set out by President Macron? Well, Janet, NGOs say they are out there doing the work that Europe should be doing. These private search and rescue missions started when Europe's Mare Nostrum came to an end in 2014. Mare Nostrum was a humanitarian operation that was replaced by Triton in 2014. And since then, Europe's focus on the Mediterranean has been that of protecting its borders. That is when NGOs stepped up to fulfill search and rescue. And they have been saying that they're simply doing the work that Europe is unable or unwilling to do. Emmanuel Macron says they will have a role to play in this new deal. They, he says a, a negotiation between governments and NGOs will establish a framework under which they will be able to continue to operate. But of course, for now, we are still wondering how long these negotiations will take, whether or not these migrants and refugees will be able to disembark, where and under what conditions, all questions that remain unanswered at this stage.